high in the Tibetan plateau, more than 10,000 feet above sea level. Where the air is thin, the winds bite, and the terrain feels untouched, China began one of its most ambitious engineering projects. Near the border with western Nepal and the Indian state of Sikkim, massive cranes loomed over a remote riverbed. Convoys of trucks hauled concrete up treacherous mountain roads. But this wasn't an ordinary construction project, it was an audacious attempt to reshape the land, not block the water, and in doing so, leave a mark that could be seen from orbit. The project required upward of 400,000 cubic yards of concrete, too much to be transported by truck. So, engineers built on site, pouring concrete directly into a living river at 10,000 feet, Amid some of the most extreme working conditions on Earth, the Yarlung Songpo River, often called the Everest of rivers, flows silently through this. High plateau, originating near Mount Kailash and cutting through the Himalayas before descending into India, where it becomes the mighty Brahmaputra. Along its journey lies the Grand Canyon of Asia, one of the world's deepest and least explored gorges. It's a place where cliffs plunge thousands of feet into fast-moving waters and few have ever dared to study it up close. Yet it was here. In one of Earth's harshest environments, that China launched a high-altitude hydropower project that would challenge not only nature, but geopolitics, engineering, and environmental science. China's interest in hydropower is long-standing. From the colossal Three Gorges Dam to dozens of smaller projects dotting its western regions, hydropower is viewed as a clean energy solution, a path to industrial growth rural electrification, and energy independence. But this project was different. The region's geology posed immense challenges, sitting atop a seismic fault zone. The soil was unstable, the banks steep, and the land constantly shifting. Engineers weren't just battling water, they were fighting the mountain itself, as calculate, and the entire structure could slide or crumble. Add to that the complications of altitude, oxygen scarcity, machine inefficiency, concrete that wouldn't cure properly in the logistical nightmare of navigating winding narrow cliff roads every element had to be adapted custom concrete mixes insulated mixers oxygen for workers satellite monitoring and even smart drainage systems the construction itself was an orchestration of precision the dam's core structure included Vertical drop modules concrete cells designed to accelerate water beneath while withstanding pressure above. This design minimized sediment buildup and allowed engineers to control the river's raw power. Reinforced containment walls flexed slightly under strain, secured with titanium anchors. The goal was not only energy, but resilience. It was a demonstration of human will against the wild, and for a time, it worked. The first dam structure was completed. The river began feeding turbines. Engineers celebrated a textbook success. But nature had other plans. Subtle changes in water pressure were detected. Satellite images showed the riverbed had shifted. 48 hours after the last concrete pour, a wall of ancient sediment downstream gave way not due to explosives, but due to the redirected flow. A sudden surge of water tore through the canyons, altering the course of tributaries and flooding villages that had never seen water at that level. Crops were disrupted, irrigation collapsed, and villagers spoke of an angrier, higher river. The project's triumphant mood turned quickly to uncertainty. Scientists scrambled to understand what had happened. Hydrologists, climate experts, and geologists from across the region and beyond analyzed satellite data and thermal scans. What they found was a cascading chain reaction. The dam had acted like a keystone, subtly shifting pressure across a delicate geological puzzle. Old formations destabilized, flow velocities changed. Riverbanks far downstream began eroding or overflowing, sometimes just a little, but enough to matter. Villages in India saw earlier irrigation cycles. Rice farmers had to shift planting. Schedules. Fish species vanished from familiar waters. Microflooding appeared in previously dry valleys. Even bird migration patterns showed signs of disruption. Asterisk, but this latest Himalayan project was something different. It wasn't just about powering cities, it was about testing the very edge of what human engineering could achieve. 
Could you pour thousands of tons of concrete into a river perched on the roof of the world and reshape it without triggering catastrophe? So the answer, it seems, is yes, but only partly. What followed wasn't failure. It was complexity. A new, an unexpected river behavior emerged. Subtle stress accumulated across fragile ecosystems, and deeper questions arose about the limits of control when nature begins to push back. These weren't dramatic outcomes that sparked protests or international outcry, but rather, quiet change is cumulative, persistent, and largely unnoticed by the broader public. If the Yarlong Songpo Dam represents the dawn of a new era in high altitude, infrastructure, it also opens the door to new risks. Could future projects trigger landslides or sediment collapses that don't stop at village edges? Might upstream diversions alter groundwater, recharge further south? Could shifts in water? Temperature and flow patterns destabilize monsoon cycles essential to agriculture across South Asia? These are no longer abstract concerns. The Himalayan region is not only ecologically fragile, but also geopolitically sensitive. It's shared by multiple nations, each with deep cultural and economic ties to the rivers that originate in these. Highlands. When one country changes the course literally, or symbolically, it can set off more than just water flows. Asterisk. So what's next? Most likely more construction, more research, more cautious optimism. China is unlikely to abandon its infrastructure goals, but the world is watching more closely now, asking sharper questions, demanding clearer answers. Perhaps the most lasting legacy of the Yarlong Sumpo project won't be the electricity. It generates, but the shift in perspective it triggered. Where high-altitude dams were once viewed solely as triumphs of energy engineering, they are now seen within a wider lens, political and cultural. The earth shifted. The rivers rerouted. Ecosystems adapted. What began as a remote construction effort became a case study in humility, a reminder that even the most advanced interventions must answer to forces beyond their control. As the final and largest dam on the Yarlong Songpo nears completion, the stakes are higher than ever. Will it deepen tensions over water rights in South Asia? Will downstream nations like India and Bangladesh push for formal treaties and data transparency? Or will it quietly reshape the region again, not with noise, but with slow, deep, and lasting change? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Will this project become a symbol of sustainable progress? A quiet warning echoed through mountain rivers for years to come. Subscribe to our channel to stay updated on new discoveries, scientific breakthroughs, and the unfolding stories at the edge of the possible.